Hey, so today I'd like to talk to you about my journey as a machinist. Bigger. Machinist. My journey began with this simple project here. I wanted to make myself a little camera lens. This is a Nikon F-mount lens with a single element. And I figured it would be a pretty simple first machining project. There's a couple of tubes that are sort of pressed into each other, but the tricky part was making this element here that turned a rotation into a linear motion. So that required making a one thread per inch groove. And being sort of an absolute novice, I thought, well, that's easy, you just get a lathe. So I bought myself a cheap Harbor Freight lathe. I like to buy cheap tools when I'm beginning a hobby because I'm never sure whether I'm actually gonna stick with it. So I bought a cheap lathe and said, that's the right tool for cutting a thread. And I was wrong. And thus started my very comedic uh, <laughs> series of YouTube videos trying to make this, where I was pretty roundly and soundly ridiculed for my attempts to, to, to cut this one thread per inch groove. It ended up with me having to basically convert this entire Harbor Freight lathe into a CNC lathe with live tooling. And at that point, I was pretty hooked on the hobby and I effectively got this thing done. Now, it doesn't make the best videography, but it's a cool artistic lens and I like it. I got it done. So today I want to share with you some news. More about that later. And uh, I'll take you out to the shop and show you what's going on with my current journey as a machinist. Let's get out there. Let's start with the beginning. The venerable Harbor Freight mini lathe that I've converted to CNC. You can see here's the stepper motor I mounted to drive the lead screw. Here is the spindle for the uh, live tooling that mounts up here. I've cannibalized a lot of the other parts that were on here to make my camera robot. If you haven't seen that video, that might be interesting to you. But it's been sitting here gathering a fair amount of dust. Um, but that's where it all began. Let's look over here and look at the milling machine. My next acquisition was Precision Matthews PM25MV milling machine. I figured I started with a lathe, best get a milling machine next, and this seemed to be the right size for the very small garage that I was working out of. The astute among you will notice that it is in a state of disrepair. This is something that has happened over the last few days because uh, I've got some news to share, which is that after investing a lot of time and money into building this wonderful shop, uh, my family has decided to move back to Australia and start again in a garage. Uh, we have two young kids, my family's all in Australia, and we think the best gift that we can give them is to be with cousins and aunts and uncles and grandparents. With COVID, it's been really hard. Um, Australia's under lockdown, no one can come visit here. No one's met our daughter, or no one in our family has met our daughter. So we wanna go back and, and, and give them that gift. Which means that I need to break these things down to get them ready to be put on a shipping container to be shipped to Australia. The marginal cost of weight on a shipping container is pretty low. Uh, but the shipping company wants me to have everything in small size that can be lifted up and carried by one or two people. And so I'm breaking this down. And that's going to allow me to do some changes. So let's talk about what I want to do to this milling machine. My plan with this machine in, when I was moving into this shop was to keep it as a small mill and then go out and buy myself something like a, a three horsepower sort of Bridgeport style knee mill for larger work that I need to do on this farm. That's probably not gonna be a reality with the house in Australia. So I've decided that in breaking this down, I'm gonna think about converting this to CNC. That will make it more useful to me and uh, it'll allow me to do some more projects. So to do that, basically what you're doing is you're converting the manual hand wheels that turn these lead screws into CNC motors, replacing the hands and replacing the lead screws with ball screws. Uh, in these manual machines, you typically have Acme threads here. These are the trapezoidal profile threads. They're really good for transmitting force. They're not so great at lots of rapid movements. And the thing about CNC is you're not doing a lot of perpendicular left-right moves. You're doing interpolation and circles, and you're gonna be doing a lot of movement. And so ball screws are much better. They give you less backlash, and you wanna convert these to ball screws. So I've been looking online. I think what I'm gonna do is buy the Arizona Video 99 kit. Um, I don't really feel like I, I wanna start making all the mounts for this myself. Um, it's gonna be difficult without having a milling machine to do that because I've already broken this down. 
Um, so I'm going to buy that kit. I'm still debating between Linux CNC and Mach 3. Mach, Mach, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm leaning towards Linux CNC, given that I have a, a pretty good background in Linux. Um, and then I need to decide what sits between the computer and the stepper drivers. Uh, the stepper drivers come with the kit from Arizona Video. Uh, Mesa, Mesa makes things, but I figure folks out there in my very small YouTube community might have some suggestions. The other thing I'm thinking about, and this is why I've got the headstock very gingerly perched here, maybe I'll just rotate it, is what to do with... Uh, what to do with this motor here. This is a one horsepower motor that drives the spindle uh, via this belt and pulley system. It's a brushless DC motor, so three phase motor with a Hall effect sensor that feeds back into the brain box here that allows you to have the, where's the knob? Variable speed control. Uh, this is all set up to be 110 volts. In Australia, you're running at 240 volts, uh, 50 hertz, whereas it's 60 hertz over here. The good news about the place that we're moving to in Australia is we have three phase power. So that's three phases, 120 degrees apart of 400 volts coming into the house. So I should be able to power much more powerful things. I don't know how good this milling machine is to have uh, more horsepower on it. Although I've been watching James Clow, Clow42's videos where he put that three horsepower automatic tool changer spindle on his G0704 Grizzly mill, which I think is a little bit less rigid than this guy is. So maybe I can completely get rid of the quill and the headstock and just put one of those big motors on there. Maybe I could just modify this circuit to run at 240 volts. Maybe I could do a bunch of different things. So uh, I've got to make some decisions there, but I think my first step is to buy the parts to do the CNC conversion. And then one of my first projects in Australia will be converting this to CNC and then working out what to do about the drive. Let's go have a look at the, mill, uh, the lathe, which was my next purchase after the milling machine. So sticking with the theme, this is the Precision Matthews 1228 and a bunch of letters, VF, LB maybe. That means 12 inches of swing over the bed. I think it's seven inches over the carriage and 28 inches of turning between centers capacity in this direction. I've enjoyed this guy a lot. Um, when uh, I bought this shop, my plan was to upgrade and get something like a, a, a like a 14 inch swing Moriseki. I don't really need this much length or I haven't needed it so far, uh, but more swing would be nice and just more horsepower and more rigidity. So I have a bunch of plans for what I'm gonna do with this. I'm not gonna get the Moriseki. They're too expensive. Uh, to ship to Australia and too expensive to buy in Australia. So I think I'm gonna just stick with this guy. It'll be more appropriately sized for the size of shop that I have. To be honest, I do a lot of small work on this, but bigger always gives you more rigidity. So one of the things I'm gonna do with this is the same to what, is what I did on my mini lathe, which is replace or get rid of the cross slide. I very rarely need to turn little tapers or threads. I can just use a die and I'm gonna put a rigid tool post on here with like a post up there for holding an indicator. If you've seen Robin Ranzetti's videos or Stefan Gottswinter's videos, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen his channel and, and you're watching my channel, what are you doing? Um, they're much better than I am. But anyway, that'll give me some more rigidity there and maybe I could bump up the horsepower on the motor when I work out how to convert this brushless DC over to 240 volts. What else do I want to do to this? Um, given that I'm converting the milling machine to CNC, I'm not going to need the DRO from that anymore, so I'm going to mount it onto this guy. I'm probably going to need to get some new glass scales. I think I can use the Y-axis scale to measure the cross slide. Um, I have, I think, 19 inches of glass uh, on the X-axis from the mill that could potentially go on the bed, but then I'd lose some travel here. I don't know how much of a thing that's gonna be. Anyway, um, I'll work that out. But the first thing that I really need to do to this guy is take it apart uh, because it's too heavy for one or even two people to lift. We'll be selling our tractor soon, so our lifting capacity is gonna drop pretty significantly. But I need to break this down so that it's more easily manhandled. I've been nervous about taking these guys apart because there is some pretty fine alignment between the bed and the headstock, likewise the column and the head on the milling machine. 
they're pretty good out of the factory. Uh, I know that my mill was out of tram and this guy turns a taper, but I haven't been super confident in my ability to actually get them back into square, so I haven't messed with them. But I'm gonna to have to do that to break it down. That'll force me to do the work necessary to get these guys really tuned up to be good. So let's not turn it on, let's take it apart. I think this guy will be the easiest to start with. I think I've got most of the easy stuff off here. It's taken off a bunch of weight. I've taken off the tail stock, the compound slide, um, some covers. What you just saw me do then was uh, remove or detach the, the motor, the BLDC motor from the electronics box. Um, I've had a bit of a poke around in here. There's a little Atmel chip that acts as the microcontroller. Um, I don't think this will be too hard to convert to 240. Um, Maybe easier said than done, but shouldn't be too much of a project. Anyway, my thinking is that probably two thirds of the weight is in the bed. The remaining third of the weight is attached over here. I wanna work out how to attach the two so that I can separate them. It's a little bit nerve wracking because there's a lot of alignment obviously between the spindle and the bed. Um, but by taking it apart, at least I'll know how it goes back together and hopefully I'll be able to come up with a good way to keep it aligned when I put it back together. I think my plan of attack is to take this motor off this thin sheet metal cover should come off pretty easily. There's some bolts through there. I had a look at the exploded diagram and it's got exploded diagrams for each of the sections, but not a good diagram for how it all attaches together, or at least I wasn't seeing it. Um, but I think I'm going okay. I'm gonna keep on just removing bits, keeping track of what I remove, and hopefully we'll slim this guy down so that it can be uh, moved a little easier. Let's get back to it. I have the gearbox open and I've had a problem with this gearbox pretty much since I've got it that it's had a very persistent oil leak and I'm just looking at the teeth. They look a little bit chewed up but not too bad. I mean obviously there was oil in here. Um, I'm a little weirded out by the fact that it looks like there's grease in here too. This gasket which you can't see. Looks pretty f chewed up. Um, I think this will need to be sealed up a little bit better when I put this guy back together. Anyway, um, 
that's the gearbox of this lathe. So you can see how it works, the power comes in through here, then the two levers let you move this guy around, or this guy around, which sets the ratio of the speed of the lead screw compared to the spindle. Oh, my arm's in the way. Anyway, I see some bolts here, so I'm gonna take the gearbox off, because why not? I still haven't worked out how the rest of this stuff comes, ah, that's pretty tight. Worked out how the rest of the uh, headstock comes off the bed, but we'll work it out. Just keep on taking things apart. And once you've taken everything off, everything's off by definition, right? Lefty Lucy. Uh, there we go. It's loose. I think it's safe to say that the headstock is uh, no longer in alignment. The goal of today's mission was to get things broken down into sort of bite-sized pieces that a single person could carry. According to Australian immigration or import regulations, I can't pack the boxes myself. It has to be packed by the shipping company and they wanted things broken down to be bite-sized chunks. So that is done. I could break things down further, but there's no real need. I'll probably clean things up a little bit more, degrease and just get things readily packed so that it can be on a shipping container for a couple of months before it gets to Australia. In the meantime, I have gone off and I've ordered the ball screws from Arizona CNC Video 99 um, for the PM25 MV uh, CNC conversion. I've also decided to go and buy some clear path servo motors for that conversion. And that's probably overkill. Um, stepper motors would be totally fine for that application. The reason why you'd go with servo motors is that they're a little bit more accurate. Um, they're quieter than stepper motors. Uh, but that comes at the cost of uh, cost. <laughs> They're about two to three times more expensive than the equivalent steppers. But the reason why I wanted to make that investment was really so I could learn about the ClearPath system. It's a, it's a really interesting ecosystem if you haven't checked it out. And my thinking there is maybe returning to my roots and converting this lathe to CNC and basically making a C axis. So replacing the main motor, the BLDC motor, with an AC servo motor, something like in the two to three kilowatt range, and uh, getting rid of the gears and all that sort of stuff, and uh, that would be a fun project. But before I went down that path, I wanted some experience with clear path servos, so I've ordered those. And you're probably not gonna see me work on that until I'm in Australia. So this is probably gonna be my last machining video for a while. As to the title, top 10 machining fuck ups, that's basically all of my videos, so I feel totally fine using that clickbait title. Um, I'm sure there were fuck ups in here and I'll, I'll hear about them down below. Anyway, until next time, have a good one and I'll see you in the future. G'day.